going on guys? It's 3 in the morning. We gotta do six loads of overstock pigs going out at our site one barn. We're doing three loads right now and then they're gonna come drop the pigs off and come back for another three loads. So we'll have like a two hour break, break period in there. Should take an hour and hour and a half to load the first three and then an hour and a half for the second three. Hopefully, if the pigs move good. <laughs> Got the first load loaded in 23 minutes. It's pretty good. If you can do, if you can load a load in about 30 minutes, you're in good shape. And you ha don't have pigs that move very good. 30 minutes takes an hour, and then an hour, and then an hour, and 30 minutes, and then that's where you get off at. But these pigs are moving pretty good, so hopefully we keep it up. How many pigs per load, Pops? 430 pigs per load, six loads, uh, 20. 570 I don't know <laughs> something like that all right so we just got three loads done it's around 4 30 and the first truck will be back here probably around six o'clock this morning to do our second go of it so we're gonna have some time to cool our jets and then we'll be back up here to finish so are we taking a nap or are we what are we gonna do with this hour that we got I'm gonna go sit on my arse have more coffee ponder life's questions probably peruse some YouTube videos especially this will do farm <laughs> like and subscribe no. round two here we go just finished up the last load of hogs for the day. Six loads done, 7 a.m. Pretty good time. Dad, oh. how was it? Days like this make me feel like I'm about 50 years old. Wait, maybe it makes me feel like I'm 60. I don't know, it makes me feel old. I'm going to need a nap, I do believe. So now that all the fun is done, as far as loading goes, we have a whole side that's empty. And we're gonna have to thin out all the pigs that we have in both buildings to fill up these empty pens. And we're also gonna have to get these mats out as well because these pigs no longer need those rubber mats. This would be a perfect time to do that because there's no pigs in the pen that you have to mess with getting the mats out of. Thin pigs, get the mats out. That's the two 
main objectives on the list for the week. What do you say we do all that today? I don't think we're gonna probably do all that today. At this will do farm, we're like the army. We do more before 9 a.m. than most people do all day long. I'm gonna go home and take a nap. You can chore, and then we'll go up to the shed and see what's cooking up there. And uh, we might spend the day surveying. I almost forgot to mention, if you guys have no idea what overstock pigs are and what it means, and you wanna know what it means, I have a whole video explaining the whole rundown on overstock pigs and what that means for us and what that all entails. So click on this video if you wanna learn more about it. If not, let's get back to this video. <laughs> well, no rest for the wicked, the righteous don't need it. When I got done loading pigs, I went home and took a shower and I thought, oh, I'm gonna sit on my arse for a while. Then I saw a PSI crew truck drive by and I was like, I'll bet you those boys are there to put the tunnel curtains on. So if that's the case, I probably better get the heaters up there. And no more had I had that thought than I got a text message from the PSI job site supervisor asking me whether or not I could get those heaters up there. I'm gonna start the skiddy up and let it warm up, and then I'm gonna take, I'm gonna go up there, talk to those guys a minute, then I'll go get the heaters and start bringing them up. I guess I won't sit around all day. She's a little cold this morning. Would you look at that? Real nice. We awoke. I didn't know if we were gonna wake up, but we did. When we're up here, we're going to give you guys an update on all the stuff we missed while we were asleep. You miss a few hours, you miss a lot around here. That's how it's going. There's not enough hours in the day to do it all. There just really isn't. To edit, to shoot everything going on up here, to do the work that needs to be done. But we're trying, people. We're trying. Ah! If you remember, yesterday they had their board across the bottom and this was open, they had the plywood on the inside. But now then they've, they've insulated this down the wall, they put their foam on, and then they put their steel on. You can see here, they've got this piece of trim and bird wire to keep the birds out and then your fascia board so it looks pretty. But this board right here is important because this little turn right here that is so when you're pulling air in here in the winter time and it's snowing the air will hit this and roll and then the snow will fall it won't suck the snow up into the attic you don't get a snow drift in your attic because that's no bueno they've gone ahead and they've put the pump out covers on so these are pvc plank and they they make them over a psi stainless steel rivets so they're gonna last, and this is UV resistant, so you don't have to worry about going crap. Now these pump outs are sloped, and you'll see on a lot of hog buildings, they put a flat pump out on it. If you've ever been in one of those during a rainstorm, you know why these are sloped, because usually you can hear the rain running off the back side of them into the pit. There's gonna be a lot of water coming off this roof, and when it hits when it hits the fan or it hits this, it's gonna run off. And that's why we make them slope, and then these are your 24 inch pit fans. They aren't wired yet. There'll be an outlet right here. Uh, they'll drill through from the inside, run conduit. Anyway, we're kind of buttoning everything up so that it's ready to go. So the carpenter crew is up here and they're finishing up putting tin on the outside wall. They have all the sides done besides the south side. And they got all the insulation in, but they're just finishing up the tin. One last thing I wanted to show you guys is we got these two LP tanks, as you guys know, and each one is a thousand gallons. We only burn about a thousand gallons of LP a year, and you only really burn it in the, the first month that you're starting a group of pigs off in the winter time because you gotta burn gas to heat the barn up enough so it's proper temperature for them. But the rest of the time, we don't really use these. To start off this barn with pigs, we'll probably have to burn a little bit more than a thousand gallons of LP because if you think about it, the pit's gonna be empty and when your pit's got manure in it, there's less space to heat up. But when it's completely empty, it's a lot to heat up and there's, there's a lot more space. We have two of them just in case, you know, something goes wrong and you need more LP and you have to have another tank. And when LP's real cheap, 
we'll just buy it in bulk and we'll just fill up all our LP tanks. Um, Cause we have two here, four down there at our double site and two at our other building. And if LP's cheap, you might as well buy a whole load and fill up all your tanks. That way you're on top of it and you're good to go. I didn't know you were a generator expert. Well, I have a multitude of skills and trial and error will get you a long ways. Although I'm not sure if I'm probably going to install this generator, but we have one just about like this. Down at site two, we have a 100 kW because it runs my house and the grain bins and all that. So this is an 80, but it's basically the same setup. It's a John Deere diesel engine in it. When this is all said and done, because this building is straight tunnel, there's no natural curtains on it. If the power goes out, you gotta have a standby generator. That's one thing where those natural barns like site one, the integrator that we grow for, they don't require you to have a generator if you build natural barns because if the power goes out, you have curtain drops on the curtains and they will drop and basically ventilate the building so you don't have to worry about pig suffocating. Here, if the power goes out, you better have your generator because otherwise you're gonna be in trouble. So that's that's one cost that we have that you wouldn't have to have down there, but pretty much you wanna have a generator anyway just because it gives you peace of mind. My favorite thing about my barn so far is the two widow's peaks that sit at the east and west side of it. That's what that is right there. There's no real purpose to it. It's just style and um, it's really aesthetically pleasing when you drive up here and see two widow's peaks on both ends. All our other barns just have one widow's peak depending on what side faces the road. Real sharp, real sharp. What do you think? A little bit closer, a little bit closer. I think today is a great day. Some days are better than other and this one's been pretty good. We got a lot done and a lot got done up here and we're one step closer to getting a check. One step closer to getting paid. I was just saying, I think it's pretty crazy this week we started and it was just a concrete structure and now it's literally a barn. Yeah, it goes pretty fast. Once you start putting sticks up, it goes pretty fast. We're on the downhill deal. I mean, less than a month this will be ready. I'm not sure what our pig date's gonna be, but put three weeks from now, we'll probably be christening this. We're gonna get a giant glass bush light corn bottle and we're gonna christen it like it's a ship. 